Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to paint this mini treehouse in a succulent garden. I based this painting from an image I found by the Desert Princess. She does really amazing arrangements with colorful succulents and I really like the idea of having a cute treehouse. So I made my own version for the painting so that it reflects my aesthetics and also fits in the frame that I have. I really like the big leaves on the tree or the succulent. The big leaves compared to the treehouse make the treehouse look a bit more tiny and miniature. So I'm going to paint the same exact plant for that one. However, because I have a different amount of space for my paper, I decided to change up the shape of the tree so it can fill the space a bit better. I made the branch on the right a little bit longer because I want to include a tire swing in the composition. So here I've drawn out the area of the tree and the house because those elements are basically the main subject of this painting. So I have to make sure that I've allocated enough space and it fits well within the paper. Once I'm happy then I'm going to start adding on the leaves. I'm drawing them one by one because I want the leaves to be big compared to the house. This way it doesn't look like a normal bushy tree and I also want to draw them in clumps scattered on the branches that I've drawn out. In some areas I extended some of the branches outwards to fill in some of the empty spaces a bit better if the branches didn't reach a certain part of the paper. When I was painting the leaves, I like to think of single pointy flower petals, but they're in more layers and each layer might have a bit more distance next to each other. I made sure that I didn't draw any of them with frills and I also made sure that the tips are rounded which will help the leaves look more sturdy and thick. Now I'm going to draw different types of succulents at the bottom to fill in the rest of the space and for decorative elements. I think if I scale them a bit better, it'll make the house look a bit more miniature. However, I only realized this after reviewing the painting again once I've edited the footage. So that's something to think about as you make yours if you want to scale it differently in order to make your house look more cute. But like usual, if you don't want to sketch yourself, I'll also have the outline available in my coffee shop. Just like the tree, I like to imagine the succulents here like flowers with many layers without the frills and each petals look fatter and more plump. I like to start by drawing at the center and then building up the petals around it depending on where it's facing. I like to also play with the shape of the petals where some are longer and pointy and some are a bit more rounded to depict in the different types though I didn't really have any specific ones in mind. For this one that I'm drawing at the moment, you can see that the succulent is facing the left and this is because we can see more of the petals on the left and the petals on the right are mostly foreshortened. I don't want to overwhelm this painting with too many details since I am painting fairly small. So on the right, I just made bushes that I kind of imagined as moss. Next, I'm going to go over the colors I'll be using. Firstly, this is Windsor Red by Windsor Newton, Crimson Lake by Holbein, Chinese White by Holbein, Indigo by Schmincke, Terra Verde by Holbein, and Hansa Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith. I'm also going to use Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins. For the outline, I'm going to use a colored pencil in the color Natural Brown. This is by Derwent, but you can also use a hobby grade colored pencil or even pen. Now let's begin to paint. I'm going to start with the leaves on the tree. I'm just going to get my colors ready. I used a mix of Terra Verde and Hansa Yellow Medium and on the side I'm going to use the same color with a little bit of indigo for a slightly darker green. I like to start with the Terra Verde and Hansa Yellow Medium mix to just paint the base color of each of the clusters. I'm going to paint a few clusters straight away without leaving any section of the leaves, just painting them all flat. And I'm going to do this a few at a time so the paint of the previous clusters have a little bit more time to settle so they're not puddling wet. And while the surface is still damp, I'm going to add the darker green with that little bit of indigo and I'm going to paint this on the inside of the petals. If like the first cluster, the leaves are very close together or they're touching. I like to paint the leaves alternatively so you're leaving a bit of space essentially in the middle of the darker greens. This way the darker green won't just blend into each other. 
I'm going to use the same method to paint the next few clusters. As you can see, the color here is a little bit more yellow-green because it has more Hansa yellow. Personally, I like to create slightly different color variations, which is why I don't mind doing this. You can also use completely different colors. You can turn this into a purple tree or a pink tree. When I was painting this, I kind of realized that it would actually be really cute if I add some pink tips on this to just bring some brightness. But it was a little bit too late by then. After adding the dark green, I don't think the pink tips will stand out as much. So I just ended up sticking with the color that I've already used. You can see that after I added the alternative greens, I went back in and fill in whatever I've left completely empty. And this is how I like to approach it in order for the leaves to look separate from each other. After I've applied the base color and I have a pretty good variation of the gradients for each leaf, I like to work on a completely dry surface and do the same thing. This time though, I like to use a slightly thicker consistency for a darker value and so the color is a little bit more vibrant. And I also like to apply it right at the center then use a clean damp brush to soften the blend to the very tip. This way I'm creating more contrast between the darker and the lighter value which in turn also adds to the form of each of these leaves. For some of the leaves which we can see a bit of the sides, I like to either leave a bit of the edge with a light base color or add a little bit of outline using a darker value. This will add thickness to the leaves rather than the leaves looking like it's very thin and flat. And this then will make them look like succulent leaves instead of normal leaves. I've completely forgotten about the leaves on the side here, so I'm just going to use basically the same method as before, starting from the base color and then adding a slightly different value along the center while the surface is still damp, then layer on a darker value along the center and softening to the tip while leaving a little bit of the base color along the edges. Lastly for the leaves of this tree, since I feel like the color is a little bit too monotone, I decided to add a little bit of a darker value for some random leaves. Next I'm going to mix up the brown for the tree trunk and the branches. I'm starting with the green that I've already pre-mixed and I'm going to add a lot of Hansa yellow and red which will create an orange and mix with this green will then in turn create this brown. Of course you can play around with the ratio a little bit for different tones as well. I'm starting with a really light consistency to paint the base color because I don't want the color of the tree trunk to be too dark so it doesn't overwhelm the whole painting since I want this to be kind of a fun, cute and whimsical painting. So I made sure to start with a really light color and then slowly building the form by adding darker tones on the right and left side and just softening the blend as I go. I felt like the color was a little bit too reddish brown so I ended up adding some indigo into the mix and using a really thin consistency I just layered on a bit more color while following the pattern of the tree trunk from the reference image. I left out some white negative space for lines or the pattern of the tree trunk and I don't want those lines to be too clear so I made sure to dot the paint as I'm applying it. Then I also placed the color on the sides then just using a clean damp brush to soften those two edges. Make sure when you're leaving out the negative lines, you're following the curvature of the tree trunk so the tree trunk looks rounded like a cylindrical form instead of a flat surface. 
Next I'm going to paint the succulents in the foreground and before that I'm going to add a couple more because the one standing looks kind of lonely. So I just drew out a couple on the sides then I'm going to paint the background bushes first using the previous mix of Terra Verde and Hansa Yellow Medium in a really thin consistency then following with a slightly thicker consistency for the bushes at the bottom. When I'm painting the bushes I want the surface to look uneven so I try to apply the paint by making really tiny micro rotations with my brush. As I'm painting the bushes closer to the foreground, I use a slightly thicker consistency of the color so the bushes in the background look a bit more faded and the ones in front look more distinct. I'm also going to use the same green to paint the moss on the rocks. As for the color of the rocks, I'm using the brown that I've already pre-mixed and I adjusted the tone by adding more yellow and red, starting with a really thin consistency and a really light brush load. So the base color dries really quickly and I'm just going to build the slightly darker value around the edges of the succulents next to the rocks. After this, I'm going to go back to the bushes again and I also switched to a smaller brush this time using a thicker consistency of the same color and just like before, I'm randomizing the application with the tip of my bristles to depict a natural bushy texture while also adding some depth. Since I've missed the opportunity of painting the tree leaves with some pink tips, I'm going to do this to the succulent that I'm painting right now. So the bottom of each of the petals are this really light yellow green and the tip is pink from a mixture of Windsor Red and Chinese White. Since the area is very small, be very careful when you're trying to apply a two-tone color for each petal. Try to use a really light brush load as you're applying the paint so it doesn't become a puddling mess. Or you can also switch to a very small brush, this way it's much easier to target those small areas and the water won't travel out too fast out of your bristles. For these smaller succulents, instead of using the yellow green, I start with a thick consistency of Hansi Yellow and at the top I added the pink tips using the same mixture. While the surface is still damp, I'm going to take off the excess using tissue. This will leave you with a lighter, more pastel tone. Since I've taken off too much of the pink, I'm just going to repaint it along the edges. For this next one, I want the color to be a pastel bluish green. So I used a mix of indigo, Chinese white, and a little bit of terra verde. I'm just going to paint the leaves one by one in rows. And whatever is in between, I'm going to fill the space with a vertical line with a brown mixture. For the succulents in front, I want to stick with the pink color theme. So here I'm using a really thick consistency of the pink first since we can only see the tips along the center you can see that the pink is most concentrated at the center of the succulent and then we can start to slowly see each petal bloom out. As for the rest of the petals I'm going to fill it in using a really thin consistency mix of the pink with added Hansi Yellow. I'm going to use the same color for the next succulent on the left, but this time I'm going to approach it differently. I'm going to start with the light color first. This has a little bit more Hansi Yellow, so the color is more orange. Then while the surface is still just only cold to the touch, I'm going to add the pink at the center. Now for the succulents in between, I'm just using the blue-green mixture that I already pre-mixed on my palette in really light consistency and I added some purple tips. This is from the same blue-green with added crimson lake and Chinese white. For the ground, I wanted to have a grey pebble texture. So for the grey, I used the brown that I've already pre-mixed on my palette and I just added a little bit of indigo and Chinese white, then use a really thin consistency to cover the base. Then while the surface is still damp, I'm going to add a little bit more indigo in the mixture to turn this into a darker value. And I'm going to place it along the left so it looks like the light is coming from the left and there are some cast shadows from the tree branch and so on. I'm also going to add some cast shadows for the items on the left, like for the rocks and the succulents, I place the shadows on the right hand side.
Still using the same color, I'm also going to glaze it on the right hand side of the tree trunk. I'm going to layer the bench the other way around, so I'm painting on the shadow first instead of the base color. Then once the shadow is completely dry, I'm going to glaze over the actual color of the bench, which will be this deep yellow mixture from Hans Yellow Medium and a little bit of Windsor Red. I still felt like it's a bit too light, so I ended up glazing over a thicker consistency of the orange. I had a bit of problem trying to figure out the color of the house, so I actually repainted the house three times. I first started with this creamy color, which I just picked up from my palette since it's just a really thin consistency, and then I ended up changing it to pink, but the pink turned out to be murky because it had this previous color underneath, so by the end of it, I just turned it into a light pastel blue. So it's completely up to you what color you want to paint in the house, I just realized by the end of it, I want the color of the house to complement the soft succulent colors so keep that in mind and it's just best to paint this using the right color straight away so you don't lose the vibrancy of the color after painting on the base color of the house I use a really thick consistency of a brown mixture this is the same mix that I used for the tree trunk before just in a thicker consistency if you want it to be a darker more muted brown you can add more indigo in the mixture since I was thinking of a rope ladder at this point, I wanted to look rustic, but I accidentally made it a little bit too curvy. Just be mindful with that and be careful as you're painting the ladder. Here I also decided to freehand the railings of the balcony. You can use colored pencils or a pen to do this, or if you want to paint it like me and you feel uncomfortable painting a freehand, you can also use pencil first to guide you as you're painting it. Once the base color of the ground is completely dry, I'm going to add on the pebble textures. I'm just basically painting flat ovals and it's getting a bit more flat and smaller as it gets towards the back and bigger and a little bit more round in the foreground. This will kind of suggest some perspective and I'm going to pair it up with this orange color for a slightly different shade of the pebbles. For the string on the tire swing, I just painted it using a really dry brush load so it's a bit easier to control and create the thin line but as I mentioned before you can just draw it on using your colored pencil later on as you outline or you can also use a pen for this. Here I'm just adding on the darker values for the bushes it's basically the same green mixture with added indigo and of course I try to soften the blend as well using a clean damp brush. I also added some freehand flowers in the background, but don't worry about it now since I'm going to be painting them on the bushes later on as well. So now I'm just going to focus on outlining and also giving texture to the tree trunk with my colored pencil. I added some vertical shadings for the darker parts and I also darken the bottom of each line so it looks like the surface is kind of uneven and that line is popping outward slightly. I also added some dots and markings for extra texture for the tree trunk. Then I'm just going to outline the rest of the elements here. And I'm also going to add smaller details since it's easier to draw out the outline for the bench. You can also enhance some of the pebbles if you would like. I personally add a texture to the rocks as well. As for the succulents, since they're fairly small in terms of scale, I made sure I sharpened my pencil beforehand so the lines can be finer. As you can see, the house is now magically pink, but I'm going to change this again later on. 
Anyway, now moving to the bushes, I felt like they were kind of empty. So I'm going to add a little pop of color by adding some flowers. I used bleed proof white and a thick consistency to give a white base for the flowers on these bushes. Then you can pick any color you would like. I personally prefer some bright pastel colors, so I made sure to mix in some white into any hue that I would pick for the flowers. For some of the white ones that I've left, I'm going to just add a yellow dot at the center. After adding on the outline, the side of the bench looks a little bit too dark since the outline is kind of thick. So I ended up outlining the edges using a thick consistency of bleed proof white and then coloring it in over with a light yellow. Here I'm going to enhance the thickness of the succulent leaves by using a light yellow green mixed with bleed proof white to make it opaque. Lastly, I still felt like the painting needs more color so I'm just going to add dots as extra flair for this painting to also make it look a little bit more whimsical by using the previous colors that I've already used for the painting itself so it's still consistent. And the colors that I've chosen here are the light pink, light purple, and yellow. So after finishing off the painting, this is when I recolored the whole house. I just used bleed proof white to create a base before adding the blue because the color was already a little bit too dark and murky. And I also added these bushes by again adding bleed proof white as the base, then adding the green color on top. And that's basically it for this painting. Like usual, the list of tools will be in the description box, including the link to the outline. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing for more tutorials like this. Thank you for watching till the very end, and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye!